On my last trip of the season, I traveled down the west coast of Norway, and I was lucky enough to meet someone who has been a huge inspiration to me over the last couple of years. The dude Nagiri Delan from the YouTube channel Off She Goes has exploded onto the YouTube motorcycle vlogging scene in the last year, and I've been following her journey almost since the beginning. We met at a gas station not far from Stavanger, and went for a ride through some beautiful landscapes to have a cup of coffee in a secluded beach in a very beautiful gorge. Unfortunately, the road was closed, so we had to find a different place where we could hide away from the wind. Water's ready. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to try this. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Ride the Bean. Today, I'm here with uh, a fellow YouTuber. Did you know? Hello. <laughs> um, I've been following Iruna for a few years now on YouTube, and uh, this is the first time we get a chance to actually meet. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And so I thought uh, maybe we should go for a little bit of a ride and uh, have a cup of coffee and get to know each other a little bit better. Yeah. It's not, this, um, not very often that we're in the same area. No. Either, either you are out and about, or I'm out and about. So yeah. being at the same place at the same time, we have to yeah, take the cool. opportunity. Yeah. How, how long have you been riding motorcycles? You've... For... I got my license in 2020, so three years. Three years? Yeah. So pretty fresh still. Well, why did you get your license in the first place? So both my parents had their uh, license when they were my age. They actually met at the motorcycle gathering when they were my age. Uh, so they have all these albums from them when they were traveling and going to gatherings and down Europe and all that stuff. So I kind of grew up watching that and thinking, oh, I want to do that sometimes as well. Um, and then I, because I did, um, I was on the national archery team for 11 years. Archery? Yes, archery. For 11 years. Uh, up to COVID kind of started. That's uh, not a very common thing to do. No. <laughs> no, no it's not. Um, but yeah, I did that quite, um, yeah, for a lot of years, uh, competing internationally. And then COVID hit the country and all the competitions were cancelled and all trainings were cancelled. I'm like, what do, I, what do I do now? I was at a nurse at the time, so I used to work at the urgent care facility. Worked my ass off there <laughs> during the COVID. And I was like, I need something else to do. And what better time now than any to take the license? Because all of a sudden I have all this money from working overtime as a nurse. Um, yeah, that was probably pretty hectic. Doing yeah, the... <laughs> pretty hectic. I've, yeah, it was a lot of work. So uh, yeah, that's how I figured it out. Might as well take my license now. And that's the rest is history. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And uh, how did you then start YouTube? Because you started that right after then? Pretty, You've yeah, a year after. Almost three years? Or? No, yeah, one year after, huh? pretty much. Yeah. So when I kind of got into this rabbit hole of motorcycle traveling um, and, you know, started searching YouTube for what bikes are good and all that kind of stuff, you know, you quite suddenly you're going to your channel and itchy boots and got to go and on her bike and all this you know this whole world just opened <laughs> and it was just really cool and such a big inspiration to do what I'm doing now and I was like hmm, I want to try this as well because it's such a cool way to capture your travels and to have memories and I've always been kind of into photography and video and that kind of stuff but never really known how to use it or like yeah so yeah, it was just a cool way of combining Weekends. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, for me it started just as a way of challenging myself as well. Yeah. And uh, try something new. Yeah. And get out of my comfort zone because I was really shy and awkward. I've heard, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I, I've heard both the interview, I think, and also the Anderko podcast. Yeah. With you, you oh, yeah. and Pia, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anderko is like the national broadcast channel yeah. in Norway. But it's, it's cool because like now I feel comfortable in front of a camera. I don't really think about it anymore. Yeah. And I feel a lot less shy in life in general now. Yeah. Because you have to kind of push yourself. And yeah. Especially, I'm still struggling with the part where you have to like take up a camera in front of people. Yeah. Especially if you want to have people like, you know, can I feel us having this conversation? Yeah, that's awkward. Oh, it's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I've, become, I've become comfortable filming in public. Now, yeah. Like walking around the city with a camera because you see influencers and people doing that. It's so normal now, yeah. anyway. A couple of years ago, it wasn't that... Normal. No, <laughs> it's a, and now like as you go and you kind of uh, build a mass of followers and you kind of get to know them a little bit through comments and all that kind of stuff, you feel like you're talking to someone. Yeah. 
when you have the camera in front of you. Like, I actually feel like I'm talking to someone. You're not alone on your trips. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strange feeling, but it's like, I have all these people with me and whatever I say, you know, I can share all of this experience with them. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. I've, I've been watching your channel for uh, almost since the beginning. I think the first video I saw was the one with the, uh, where you met Thomas. Yes. Thomas yep. And then uh, I've watched almost every video since then. Yeah. That was pretty much the first series I did, I think. Yeah. From traveling in Norway. And you've come a pretty long way since Things then. Things happen you've, fast. You've grown really, really fast. Yeah. But I think that's, uh, you get, you get a lot of free stuff, both, well, not free stuff, well, that too, I guess. But being a girl on YouTube and on a motorcycle, I think it's easier to gain a uh, mass of followers through that. It's been re really interesting to follow you because you're really, really good at the social media aspects, like your Instagram and everything. Is, yeah, thank you. It's, it's really impressive and inspiring. Yeah, and, uh, uh, I think it's fun. It's, it's a fun thing to do. I've been trying to sort of look at what you're doing and try similar things but it mm. hasn't worked <laughs> we're quite the same the thing with social media you need a little bit of luck for like one of your posts and or reels or that kind of stuff to actually go a little bit viral and people to see it yeah it's such a yeah i feel like it's such a matter of just having pure luck for people to actually find your post and seeing it have you met any of your your followers a lot along actually the way? yeah the last year because there was uh, last year I went to Iceland and before that time I had like on Instagram I think I had I think I just reached 10,000 followers that summer and on YouTube I still had like I don't know two or three thousand or something but after Iceland things just poof, all of a sudden I had like 50,000 on Instagram and my YouTube kept climbing and I got monetized that like a year ago um, and after that it's been quite frequently when where I meet people it's like oh you're good from YouTube. I'm like, you get recognized on the streets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is such a strange feeling the first time. I got so awkward. Yeah. Oh, that's happened a few times to me as well. Yeah. It's so random because it's it happens in the most random places. Yes. I was in the in the middle of Hardanger Fjord at a store. Mm. Nobody there, and then this guy just taps me on the shoulder. Hey, I love your YouTube. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, coffee's ready. I'm ready. Cool. So today we're drinking. Yeah. Uh, the fruity bean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gotta plug my coffee a little bit. This is so far off the coffee that I do. Yeah. Just like the powdered bags from Nescafe or something, the cappuccino <laughs> bags. <laughs> oh, well, that's blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, what is your relationship to coffee like in general? Uh, I like coffee. But uh, I, I think I started drinking coffee more when I started studying and just, I don't know, just a way of having something closer to drink and yeah. I remember drinking like my father's, when he had a cup of coffee in the morning, it was always a little bit left, like cold, old coffee and I would just go yeah. and sip of his, of his old mugs. But yeah. This is a, a naturally processed anaerobic Ethiopian coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty fruity. Okay. I don't know if you like that, but we'll see. Thank you very much. Ooh. Is this like your favorite? This is a, so like in general. I, Ethiopian naturals are my favorite coffees, okay. and Kenyan coffees. Kenyans are a bit more juicy. Okay. And I like fruity coffees. What does that mean? Like you can actually taste like the food, no, like the fruit in it, or it's well, just see more... if you can can taste the fruits. I think you can because well, coffee is a fruit. So yeah, that's true. For me, it's it's it should taste a little bit fruity. <laughs> this one reminds me a little bit of like red berries and uh... yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad at those things. <laughs> when people are tasting wines, like mm, I can taste this and that. Like what? I it's just about because it, it's just chemistry so it's uh, yeah. it's not like you put fruit in it it's mm -hmm. just a similar chemical composition yeah so you get used to sort of okay you know, if you actually pay attention to it i think it's interesting to do with everything if you taste bitter nuts mm -hmm. for example brown cheese you try to like pinpoint the different flavors in it yeah different notes it's like okay it's it's sweet but what kind of sweetness is it sugary is it caramel like is it yeah. fruity for sweetness yeah. 
and then you sort of yeah, that's a good learn challenge. how to uh, how to taste identify the tastes yeah okay <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's good it's good coffee but okay, i can't that's the I most important say like why it's good except it's good coffee Look, i'm sliding off <laughs> <laughs> the rock here <laughs> it's more fun so it was a little bit windy, so we had to find a place a little bit hidden away. Yeah. Had this whole nice scenery planned down at the beach with the like, cliffs and the sides, but no. And the road was closed. Yep. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall backwards. <laughs> yeah. But you're, this year, you're riding a new motorcycle. This is your third bike? Yes. Yeah? You started with a KTM, was it? Actually, it's my fourth bike. Fourth bike? Yeah. Pretty impressive in three years. In three years? But my first bike was a Suzuki Intruder, 1996 model, old uh, cruiser kind of thing. I thought that those were cool. Then I kind of discovered the adventure world and I tried going for a motorcycle adventure on that one for like a week. But uh, I, there's better, more suited bikes to do that than an old cruiser. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> So then I got the KDM 790, then I had the Yamaha Tenere, like you have. Uh, and then this spring I was contacted by Husqvarna Motorcycle Scandinavia. We were looking for an ambassador for their Norden. And I yeah, couldn't think of any brand that I would rather be with than a Nordic company yep, with so cool. much history. So uh, yeah, thrilled to be a part of that. How do you how do you like the Norden? Oh, it's great. Um, I, I love my Tenere, still think it's a great bike. But for the kind of uh, riding that I do with m more on-road riding than off-road riding, that bike, the Norden, offers more yeah. comfort in general. Just the seating position, the bigger seat, the cruise control, the bigger windscreen, that kind of stuff. So, really I've, enjoying it. I, I've, I've been watching a few videos on it and it looks amazing. Yeah. But I'm, I'm always afraid of the technology on these bikes. I've been exactly the same way. That's part of the reason why I wanted the Tenere, because I didn't want all this gadgety buttons and things and stuff. But now that I kind of push myself to actually learn a little bit more about them and that's like cruise control, for example, I never tried cruise control before, but it's a game changer. Yeah, that's, really. that's the one thing I've been missing a few times. Like yeah. when you have long days on the road, I, I feel my, my tendons uh, yeah. are just... Yeah, the wrist hurts. and the, all the way to the back of your shoulders and yeah. you're sitting there just holding the... Yeah. Oof. So that's a, that was a game changer. Yeah, I like it a lot. So, how, uh, was it just completely random they contacted you? Yeah, you come and pretty a random. I was, because uh, I'm also sponsored by uh, Giant Loop, which is my the luggage system that I mm -hmm. use. And they changed, they have like a new uh, European brand manager right now. Uh, and I think he was the one, like he knows someone there and they he heard like they're talking about me, I think. And then he contacted me like, is it okay if I give them your contact details? I like, yeah, sure. And then a week later, we had our first meeting, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, you've also been like writing a little bit for some magazines and stuff, biking. Yes, I do. I write a little bit for Emsa Visa, Norwegian motorcycle magazine. Mm. That was I contacted them last year, I think, um, to see if they wanted to, if I could write something for them, uh, both as a way of earning some money for travels, but also a way of just reaching out to a bigger broader Norwegian crowds because I feel like through YouTube and that kind of stuff it's more it's hard to hit like a Norwegian hmm. crowd sort of I have a lot more followers in uh, Asia and uh, USA and that kind of stuff and in Europe and especially in Norway Americans so, seem to be really into this uh, YouTube travel thing yeah my the biggest chunk of my audience is American too. yes and especially for me at least I've traveled mostly in the Nordic countries it seems like that's yeah they like that. So this year you've, you've done a trip around Scandinavia? Yes, to the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. Mostly Norway. Yeah. I made a mistake. I should have gone the other way around. I should have started with Denmark and Sweden and gone kind of had Norway as like the grand finale. <laughs> but I started with all the goodness, with all the views and all that kind of stuff and kind of spent myself and just everything in Norway. And then I came to Sweden and I was like, oh, it's kind of fun with gravel and but that, then that's fun and interesting for like two or three days and then it felt like pretty much all the same um, so 
Yeah. Sweden was not as exciting. No. Where, where in Sorry. Sweden did you go then? You go. You went from the North Cape and then down through. Not all the way to North Cape. I I went to Tromsø in Norway and then kind of went along the Finnish border and entered uh, Sweden, where the Trans Europe Trail kind of starts in in Sweden. Hmm. And did the Trans Europe Trail on and off going south. Uh, so I spent about I think ten days in Sweden. Um, a lot of nice stuff there as well, especially if you're into wildlife and fishing and that kind of stuff, hiking. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it was a combination of kind of, there was not a lot of great views really. And also I started to get really tired because hmm. I, I this was the first time I tried to do some editing and work at the same time as traveling. And the first week I was like, oh, this is okay. I can publish two episodes a week and work every night and film every day. But then you just kind of crash hard and like, holy yeah. shit, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. I've been trying to do the same thing. There's the editing on the go. I think we're getting a visitor. Yeah, that's, an, uh, <laughs> that's a sheep. fluffy company down here. Yeah, uh, publishing, like ha I've been trying to have a schedule, like yeah. two videos every every week. But then when you're writing six, seven days a week, it's mm -hmm. really difficult to, yeah. especially when you don't have power and you don't... Yeah. Uh, I thought I would be better at taking break days, like now I'm going to take the day completely off and just edit. Uh, just so I don't have to, just to have more energy, I guess. But I'm so bad at that as well, I just want to keep going and going and going and I end up spending every night editing. So you don't really have, you kind of constantly just working and yeah. thinking and not relaxing so much. So How long was this trip? Uh, 42 days. 42 days, that, yeah. that's your longest trip yeah, so far? Yeah, by far, yeah. The second longest one, I think, was the first one I did was like 28 days. That was in Iceland? No, that was uh, the first trip I did. I didn't film it. I was supposed to, um, but it was my first ever like long motorcycle trip. And I, I think I just bit over too much and I just realized I can't get used to riding with luggage and doing this camping thing and all like at the same time. So I ended up after a week, I just shipped all my filming gear at home. Like, fuck this. I need to just get comfortable on the bike first. Um, but that was to all the four corners of Norway. Uh, so I went to West Cape, North Cape, uh, Vardø, which is like, or the Eastern Point, and then down to Lindesnes and back hmm. in a month. So that was the first big one. And then yeah. uh, you, you were in Spain, like, mm -hmm. what, was it two years ago, where you tried the, the, the BMW? Yeah, that was my first time because um, I got to know uh, a dealership in Sandefjord, Norway, Speed Motorcenter, huh? on the motorcycle gathering, um, uh, Strandtreff. Huh? You might be going there this weekend? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I'm heading in that direction, yeah. so we'll see if I stop by. It's a great, great gathering. Um, and I got, kind of got to know them there, and then they, all of a sudden they called me um, at the end of October, I think, like, hey, we're doing this thing. They started uh, the, the, the leader, or the manager of Speed started a guiding tour company in Norwegian um, MC Touring Norway. So every winter they bring all their bikes down to Spain uh, so people can just like book yeah. trips during a weekend or a whole week uh, and go for motorcycle rides in, in Spain through them. And they were kind of having this opening weekend and one, wanted to see if I wanted to come along. Ah. And they were... Yeah! <laughs> cool. Um, I never done gravel before. I never ridden that kind of bike before. That's I never ridden bike. abroad before in another country. Uh, I had I haven't met half of these people. I was like, yeah, sure, let's do that. <laughs> you like challenges then? Yes, yeah. nice. I'm good at saying yes. And then kind of afterwards, I'm like, hmm, what did I actually say yes to this time? But uh, I find that when you're kind of at this point where it's equally scary and exciting. That's when good stuff happens. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, when you're a little bit scared, but mostly like excited and yeah. But when you manage to get through it, yes, that feeling is amazing. Yeah, it is. And uh, that's just when you make good memories and meet good people and have the most fun. I think so. That's the that's the thing about the motorcycle community that I've learned. It's everyone who rides bikes almost mm -hmm. are amazing people. Yeah, really interesting and really helpful and yeah. It's it's so strange because when you go on uh, on the internet. You know, for example, we have a Norwegian uh, Facebook page, the Motorcyklesiden, where people are literally scared of posting things because they get so attacked by questions or content or like there's all these trolls, but you never meet them on the road. Uh, and, you know? And who are these people commenting? Yeah, <laughs> who are they? Where are they? Because I never met 
uh, a biker on the road who's not nice. No, yeah, me neither. But on as soon as you're as you're online, there all of a sudden there's just a bunch of assholes. <laughs> it's, it's so strange. Weird. Yeah. It's the same thing with about the the coffee community. There's yeah. Everyone who works in coffee, if you go into a specialty coffee shop, everyone is super nice, super yeah. interesting. And if you ask questions, if you show a little bit of extra interest, mm -hmm. people just light up mm -hmm. and then just blurt out yeah. things. They want to share like the... Yeah. It's the same with motorcycles. And, yeah. That's awesome. And I, I like how as soon as you kind of put on your motorcycle gear and then get on a bike, we're all the same people. Like it yeah. doesn't matter what you work with or who you are or what you've done or where you've been. Which is all a bunch of bikers, and that's all that matters. And I really like that. Yeah, and everyone rides for different reasons. Yeah, it, it seems like. Yeah. Some people just ride for hobby, and some for adventure, and mm -hmm. some it's a lifestyle. Yeah, some use it as therapy and just mind stilling. And it's, it's good for a lot of things. Motorcycling. So now motorcycling is basically uh, is a very big part of your life, isn't it? Yeah, you, it's what I work you quit with. Quit your at job. The yeah, I quit my job in February. That must be scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but so far, it's uh, it's going okay. Like, yeah, I, I'm barely keeping my head above water with uh, just regular bills and that kind of stuff. Do you? Yeah. You don't only do YouTube. Do you have a, a? I have a small company on the side, but it's been painfully neglected <laughs> <laughs> because it's uh, yeah, motorcycle is a lot more fun. But yeah, I have a small uh, uh, company on the side doing a little bit of um, web page building, web design, uh, help some small businesses with social media, that kind of stuff. Do you have a background in that? Or? No, just learning on YouTube and learning along the way. So yeah. So. And then you just quit your job and start doing that full time. Yeah. That's that's impressive. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and also especially with the background as a nurse, like I know I always have a work to come back to, like there's always available jobs. So if worst case I go bankrupt, then fine, I'll be You'll a nurse have a job, yeah. yeah. So that makes it less scary. Yeah, it's true. It's the same with coffee. I have, there's always a barista job somewhere. Yeah. I absolutely need it. Yeah. Let's hope not, <laughs> but it, it's, it's like a safety knowing. Yeah. What is life like now on YouTube and motorcycle? Like, busy as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more busy than I thought it would be. Just, uh, I thought I would have like all this spare time to you know create all these videos throughout the summer and throughout the week, but uh, somehow my days are eaten up by editing and just administrative work. And yeah, time flies by, but it's awesome. Do you have any bi like big plans? going forward um, that you're working on? Well, I want to really just do like a small uh, web shop like you have, just selling small merch and uh, stickers and that kind of stuff. Um, I want to create some full length movies from my trips. Hmm. But uh, other than that, we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah. Next year I'm going to New Zealand, so that's going to be awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. With your bike or yep. are you bringing it, shipping it there? Uh, I don't know yet because um, We'll see. You're gonna have to see when we really release this video because this is not official yet. <laughs> but uh, I just um, agreed with more, uh, with Husqvarna that I will be with them for next year as well. And uh, they wanna, uh, they're trying to find a way to get a bike there, either shipping it from Austria or um, shipping one from Australia, which is like the closest. Oh, that's amazing. Husqvarna dealership or headquarters. So, that's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been to New Zealand once as a backpacker. It yeah. is stunningly beautiful. It looks epic. It's like a combination of Norway and Iceland and everything that's good with both and just yeah. clashing. It's like, there's a lot of green here. But yeah. the green you see in New Zealand is a so different like green. Fresh. It's, it looks yeah. so, so green. Yeah. So saturated and yeah. And the peaks and the volcanic landscapes and the lakes and beaches and wildlife. I envy you that. That's, I, I want to go there too. Yeah, but it's flipping expensive because I, I wanted to do it like anyway, just rent a bike. But then I started to look at the tickets and the tickets, the, just the plane tickets going there is like 2000 euros. Yeah. Just to get there. I was like, I wanted to ship my bike to uh, America. Yeah. But I contacted different contacted different uh, shipping companies mm -hmm. and the cheapest quota I got was 6,000 euro yeah. one way. It's... That's half my budget. Again, 
more than half my budget. Actually. Yeah, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> this is just impossible. Oh. Hmm. Nice coffee. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, really good. <laughs> really good. That's good. But yeah, there's so much, so many countries and stuff out there to explore, but it's so hard to find a way to actually get there. And I, I don't, I kind of settled with the fact that I don't think I'm going to be like a full-time traveler. I don't think I'm going to leave home and then travel for two years. No. I think I'm more like a part-time, I'll do this project, come home, kind of reset, do the editing and edit admin work, that kind of stuff, and then go for a new trip. I think that's, that's, that's it's probably smart. Yeah. I feel a little bit different. I, I want to be on the road all the time. Yeah. But the way I've done it, like this, this past few years now is too stressful. Yeah. I need... Like I need to be on the road for a while and then stop for a month and actually do work. Do the work. Instead of traveling every single day because I don't get anything done and I just get stressed. Yeah, because you should have done this and should yeah. have done that. But do you, do you travel because like you feel you have to or because you just want to kind of keep going? I, I'm, I don't like being in one place too long. Yeah. I get stressed and just anxious. Yeah wherever it is like I've been living many different places but I like after a certain time I just get I, time need, to move on. I need to move I need yeah. to go somewhere okay and uh, so being on the road constantly it's, it's, it's the best like way theory. best form of life for me. yeah I'm working on now um, saving up for a van okay so I want to actually get a van awesome. that I can put my motorcycle in yeah and I can drive the van to a place park it and mm -hmm. then use that as a hub to ride motorcycle awesome but that costs a lot of money. Yeah. So. Well, it's, it's really popular though. So we could really open like a bigger crowd of audience also. Maybe. For your... Uh, but uh, like, I think I need about 100,000 euro for yeah. that. For that whole project. So that's... Yeah. Uh, you need to start like a GoFundMe or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. get the project and the people. Are... That's the dream at least. And then we'll see what happens. All right. Are you taking along your girlfriend? Uh, yeah, she's taking her license now. Yeah, Mo driving like like car license first, and then she wants to take a motorcycle. Oh, she license. didn't have it either. No. Okay. Uh, she actually has her third driving lesson today. Awesome. So, uh, where's she at at the moment? She's at home in Trondheim. Okay. Yeah, she came along with you. She moved there. Yeah. Holy shit! Completely random. Wow. That was <laughs> that a whole awesome. random process. The whole thing. Yeah. We just met randomly in uh, Montpellier in France. Yeah. And then stayed in touch, and then. She was supposed to move to England. Okay. Got a job at Cambridge University. Yeah. Because what does she do? Like, what's her? She's a, a French professor, French and history professor. Okay. Teacher. Cool. She seems uh, spontaneous as well. Yeah, and she's also like a traveler. She wants to never Explore wants to and... sort of settle down in one place. She wants to keep going. So that's kind of perfect, perfect combination. Yeah. I find myself thinking of the same thing because I have a boyfriend, but he doesn't have a license, and he's never really. I think he would enjoy motorcycles, but. Like, I, I don't want to push him into doing something so expensive mm. just because, like, I want to, I want you to come with me. He, he needs to do it because he wants to. He doesn't want to come with you on the back? We never tried it. He's, like, two meters tall. <laughs> so, <laughs> with all our luggage and that kind of stuff, I think uh, it would be a little bit challenging. Mm. Not so fun to be too up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I find myself kind of... Especially like at the end of the last trip, when I was like 42 days, pretty much on my own. Mm. Especially when I traveled to Norway, I kind of stopped and uh, said hello to people, friends, family along the way. But as soon as I came to Sweden, like I didn't know so many people. So I had so many days in a row, was like, it was just me. Just me and a bike, you know, pretty much no company. I was like, Shh, crap, maybe it would be fun traveling with someone. And are, I was you, like, are you a social person? No, no, not really. Quite introverted. I enjoy my own company a lot. I don't like going to cities. I don't like having big crowds around me. Not like social anxiety. I just I get so overwhelmed by all the things happening and sounds and I just don't like it. Yeah, I, I enjoy this. It's so much better. I like people in sh for a short short period of time. Yes, but uh, like going for to like motorcycle gatherings, for example, when there's events. Yeah. Awesome. Because you have like two, three days where it's like very intense, you're doing stuff, but then you know you kind of have peace and quiet yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. That's why I like being on the bike. It's, yeah, it's just you and your helmets and your own your own thoughts and. Uh, and you can decide for yourself whenever you want to see people or not. Yeah, pretty much. I I, I like going to cities because in, it's in cities that you find the best coffee usually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's true. So I, like I've been going from city to city to city to city. Yeah. But only for like one or two days. Yeah. To visit a coffee shop or two, and then I spend a week in the forests. Alone. Yeah. Just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> gathering energy again. I should be better at that because I, I know like as soon as I get kind of get into cities, it's interesting to see like the architecture and history and just that kind of stuff. But also traveling with a bike and leaving all your stuff. It's a little I can't, bit scary. Yeah, it's a little bit scary. It feels always so risky, especially with the soft luggage, yeah. where it's so easy to just grab something and... That's kind of why I have the extra box on the back. That's it's why I bit, used to like, have the same. clumsy and heavy and big, yeah. but it feels safer. Yeah. So like, I can lock my valuables in there at least. Especially so. the camera equipment and yeah. all that stuff. If someone steals my sleeping bag and my dirty socks, then... Fuck that. Yeah, okay. it's when you get the SD cards and yeah. the cameras, then... Oh! Because <laughs> there's a lot of value in all of this equipment. Yes, both in the equipment itself, but also in the actual content. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, I've lost uh, when I was in Budapest. Uh, now, yeah, I ended up in the middle of a flood. Yeah. So my basement got flooded, and everything I had—my hard drives, my drone, everything—was just floating oh. in literal shit water, like Holy water shit. coming out of the toilet with lumps of shit in it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So what? all my like my luggage, all my clothes, my hammock, my everything oh. is just floating around in like this Shit deep water. of water. Oh my god! How did you recover from that? Like how? Oh, yes, I haven't still. Half my camera broke. Yeah. And yeah, I lost a lot of footage. Hard drives drowned. And so <laughs> crap. Luckily, this camera was uh, on the table, and mm -hmm. my Mac was on the table. Okay. Your Which drone is it fine or is it? No, it's, it's dead. dead. I had to buy a new drone. I just got it two days ago, three days ago. You got the a Mini? Yeah, Mini yeah. 3 Pro. Excellent. But uh, that was the last money that I have. Yeah. So thank you, Patreons. Mm -hmm. You you guys gave me that drone. <laughs> it's quite been expensive. Yeah. Just to get started. Now, I spent so much time in the beginning just trying to figure out what to get and just with like the camping gear as well. Yeah. To try it and then you're like, oh, I don't want to get like the really expensive stuff because like this is probably fine. But then you use it for a while and just, just stuff really annoys you and uh, size and weight, for example. And then you end up going for the more expensive option anyway. Yeah. So I, I figured I might as well just go right away for the thing that I think would be best. You have a like, super light tent. Yes. No? Yeah. The, it's Big Agnes Tiger Wall too. It's like one kilo, two person tent. That's nice. Think it's like this, this big. I have a Big Agnes uh, hotel. This <laughs> <laughs> this this rock. Do we need to re relocate ourselves uh, a little bit? Uh, just <laughs> uh, I have the Big Agnes Hotel Three. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit big. It's pretty cumbersome, but it's it's like the bike pack. Bike pack. Yeah. It's a little bit smaller than the regular one. But when you spend this much time in a tent, you I really really like anything. the extra space. Yeah. It, it has like a front tent that I can put all my stuff in. Yes. When it's raining, I can sit in there with my chair yeah. and just cook and do my shit. Excellent. I can just like sit upright because I have this thing that makes my sleeping mat into a, a chair, basically. Mm. But well, uh, you still have to like get up and it's just, yeah, it's not a lot of room. Yeah. So. Uh, that's, a, that's a controversial thing. I see all bikers. Everyone says like you need to pack light. Yeah. The bike needs to be as light as possible. Yeah. Always. That's such a there's there's two topics that's uh, actually three topics that's like a constant um, comment to my in the comments field on my channel and I see other channels as well. Is number one, my bike isn't dirty enough. <laughs> my bike is always too clean. I don't use the bike how it's supposed to be used because apparently it's supposed to be covered in mud the whole time. <laughs> number two, the bike is too big. I can't handle the size and weight of the bike. Like I need to go smaller and lighter. Uh, and number three is the you pack too much stuff. You need to pack lighter and smaller. So, uh, it's interesting how, uh, how people have very strong opinions. Yes, <laughs> probably people who never done the same thing themselves. That's true. Yeah. Usually, I can imagine at least, just sitting there having opinions. I, I kind of I disagree with the lightweight camping or packing yeah. thing because it depends on why you ride. Yeah. If you ride to actually go like full throttle off road and up the most difficult hills and yeah, sure. sure, it's nice to be light. But if you ride for adventure or for like, like I did, like living on the bike, mm -hmm. I want a little bit of luxury. I yeah. want 
and I'm bringing all seasons clothing, like winter clothes yep. and summer clothes, and you have a lot of extra stuff. And I have five kilos of coffee with me. Yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> Just bring so, whatever so. the fuck makes you happy or the yeah. feel like you need. And if you want to ship something home along the way, I've done that several times. Like, oh, I don't use this. I'll ship it home or get something new along the way that you feel like you need and do that. Yeah. Stop caring so much about what other people do. Yeah, it was, it's interesting how how angry people get. Yeah, it's so <laughs> they have like such strong opinions about this as well. It's uh, I even made like a packing video where I like unpacked everything I had. Um, but I don't think it's that much. I think I have a pretty lightweight setup. And like you say, when you travel in the Nordic countries as well, you need clothes and gear for from five degrees to thirty degrees. It's nothing in between. Yeah, Norway is difficult because. It's, like today now it's really really beautiful yeah when i started this morning uh, from bergen it was pouring down and, and seven degrees or something yeah and now we have like 20 degrees and sun and so <laughs> it's difficult you never really know what's waiting for you so yeah i I've, I've, i get better at don't caring what other people think yeah yeah but it's uh <laughs> the first times like i got some mean comments so like it really really stuck and it's so annoying because like, i get so many like nice comments but somehow still it's the bad ones that kind of stick with you. Yeah, it's a confirmation oh. bias, negative confirmation bias, yeah. I guess. About things like you were like insecure about and yeah. <laughs> but I try to be better at focusing just on the, on the good stuff. Yeah, that's important. But there's very little bad stuff. Yeah, what, what is the feedback that you're getting from your, your followers usually? They're so nice. They're so um, encouraging and um, a lot of them uh, appreciate like the low pace and that there's no like drama or it's very stress-free it's very chill it's very there's no like heavy off-roading or you know it's just i'm just going on a trip doing stuff as if i enjoy and having a good time it's not about covering a lot of distance and that kind of stuff and i think that encourages a lot of people to do the same mm -hmm. kind of lowering the because the things you see on social media and youtube is always, always so like extreme but you don't have it doesn't have to be so extreme you can do whatever you want and if it's if you want to do 100 kilometers per day and have five coffee stops and you know then do that do whatever you want yeah it doesn't true. have to be so extreme. I, I like the, the the vibe of your videos it's very sort of relaxing and chill yeah and just, just uh, that's how i like really trips. really nice thing to watch in the morning with a cup of coffee oh, <laughs> awesome i get that a lot actually it's yeah. like a good like yeah. just vibe you and thomas are making kind of similar Thomas's vibe is also very like smooth and chill yeah but like just beautiful views and yeah that's the stuff I like yeah. good views good coffee I'm a little bit more stressed <laughs> <laughs> well you do a little bit more hard riding as well I've seen some of the other trips that you've done like up on the mountainsides and oh, holy sh yeah oh I <laughs> I don't know how I get myself into these situations sometimes in the last video I saw where you were like on this really steep hill, you hadn't even had breakfast yet. The Montenegro? Yeah, yeah. and you're climbing this stupidly like, <laughs> steep hill. I'm like, what are you? And then you kind of admit in the middle of it that I don't really want, I didn't really want to do this. I'm just doing this because I think you want to see it. Yeah. And I but think, that's, yeah. A, that's kind of a, a two way thing because it's, um, I often struggle with motivation in the morning. Yeah. Just. I feel tired. I, I don't want to do anything. Yeah, kind of just want to. But I know I, 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 if I just stay inside, it's going to get worse the next day. Yes. So I have to do something. Yeah. And having the camera there, it's just sort of okay. I need to make something at least mm -hmm. that pushes me out the door and drags me out the door. Yeah. And that day, for example, I I was feeling like shit. Mm -hmm. I hadn't slept. I, I was yeah, just didn't feel good. Yeah. And. Um, when I was going up there and, and I started seeing the views, it's mm -hmm. like. It's like just, a like a mix of feelings. You feel shitty and tired, but then you look up and you see this like, wow. Yeah, like, this, this is, is stunning. It's not so bad after all. And when I reached the top there, I was like, okay, well, I didn't want to go here this morning. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't have the camera, I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. But I'm really glad I did yeah. because I got to see this. Yeah. It's like a two-way two way thing. It's kind of... It's the reward for the struggle. Yeah. But then on the way down again, halfway down, I was... I regretted it because I'm like, okay, how am I gonna get out of this? I'm, I don't. <laughs> it was, yeah. And the thing about the like when you're filming, it doesn't, it never looks as bad as it actually is. No. On the camera, it's always a lot more steeper, and 
Yeah, that's a, that, that's a little shitty thing about the GoPro. It look, makes everything look flat. Yeah. It can be like 45 degrees, but it looks like it's... Yeah. <laughs> So I'm always trying to keep that in mind when I'm watching other people's videos and like you're actually looked deep on the GoPro. I was like, holy shit, what are you doing up there? But it's fun. Like when you actually manage to get through something like that, mm -hmm. that feeling of accomplishments. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. That's why I do it because it's, I know that if I make it out the other end, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Yeah. And it gives me a story to tell. So True. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it's, it's a two way thing. I had a little bit of the same experience because um, a couple of weeks ago I went to Husqvarna, Scandinavia, did like a Norden tour where they invited uh, Norden owners pretty much to like an adventure riding event yeah. a whole weekend. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, sure, that's chill. They want to have like focus on adventure riding and just community building and, you know, outdoor life and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to be chill. But like, I, I think people overestimate my skills off road. Because they seem like, oh, you do all this rough boarding. I'm like, well, I do it very slow. It's very chill. There's no, like, I, 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 I never done like a gravel course or anything. Everything I learned, I learned myself. So it's very low pace and, and very little challenging. So I came there and was like, the pace was so far beyond what I normally do, both on like flat, flat gravel and uh, how technical the tracks were. And it was just awesome. Just pushing myself to actually do that. I came home and I was like, huh, I leveled up like three notches this time. That's cool. It's scary as fuck when you're yeah. in, in it. I thought like a hundred then... times, I'm going to the ditch, now I'm sliding, I'm falling. And I did fall a lot of times, but it was fine. And I had a, I had a great time, so. That's yeah. cool. It's, uh, it's good to push yourself sometimes. That's how you grow and get better. Yeah. And especially just gaining the confidence, because there's a lot of tracks that I want to do, but I don't have the confidence to do alone. So I want to get enough confidence on off-roading so that I can do the roads that I want to do without feeling more scared than enjoying myself hmm. while doing it. How is it like, are, is it hard to lift your bike when you drop it? This one is actually fine. I can lift it with all my luggage on it as long as it's not like in a weird position. Hmm. Um, but this one is a lot easier than the Tenere. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Because I, I tried, I kind of practiced lifting the Tenere before I went to Iceland because I knew I would be maybe places with no cell service and I wanted to know that I could actually lift it. But with that one, I had to kind of get on my knees, put my um, hands below the bike and kind of walk it up this way. I couldn't, this motion, I couldn't, it wouldn't even budge. But with this one, I can just lift it like the normal way. The Tenere is quite top heavy. Yes, and it lays so flat. It's so flat, yeah. it just lays completely on the ground. While this one have the big tanks. Hmm. So it's always kind of, it's already in a little bit of a angled position when you start lifting it. So I think that helps a lot. So now you're pretty confident on road. Yes. Oh, uh, off road, oh, yeah. off road. Getting better, getting better. And you're doing a rally in Sweden now. Yes, a three hour enduro race. That is, so uh, that's impressive. Yeah, that's gonna be uh interesting to say the least they say that uh, you know it's uh, on Gotland it's very flat so there's no like jumping or anything like that but it's very sandy and uh, if it's rain it's like a mud hell like you just mud up to your knees the whole way through so yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> that's uh yeah I kind of want to try something like that but uh, it looks so fun yeah but uh, I'm, not, I'm not a competitor I don't like competitions no Whenever, like, I like doing things to challenge myself. Yeah. But if I compete against other people, it takes the fun out of it. Okay. And I just lose all motivation. Yeah. I'm the opposite but, uh, way around. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't know. As soon as I kind of get into it, I get so enthusiastic. I'm like, I want to beat everyone. <laughs> but I know I can't. And I'm not going there because I want to have, like, a good rank. I don't care about rank at all. I just want to kind of challenge myself to try something new. Yeah. And get better at Riding in dirt and yeah, it's a cool project for the fall. How did you decide on doing a rally? I don't really know how this came about. Uh, it started just, I think it was um, the giant loop dude again, who kind of had this random idea like, hey, have you thought about doing this? I'm like, no, I haven't. Um, kind of looked into it and 
like, sure, why not? And he pitched it to, I think he pitched it to Husqvarna and they were kind of like, hey, we heard you were thinking about doing this, like, are you actually going to do it? And like, I guess so. And then it was just decided that I'm going to do it. <laughs> so super random, really. I didn't know it even existed that this was a thing before the spring when they kind of started talking about it. So that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's always so random. That's the stuff about getting to know new people and this always brings opportunities and open doors and teaches you things and yeah, you didn't know before. So. Yeah. Really cool. Who are your, do you have any like big inspirations or like, oh. who do you look up to within? Ichi Boots is like, yeah, of course, of course everyone. She's a, she's a goddess. She's a legend. Uh, Other than that, I mean, there's so many who do this for different reasons and in different ways. Um, Where do you take your inspiration from? That's such a hard question. I don't really know. But right now, it's uh, I think it's mostly actually my followers. Just the feedback I get and the encouragements from them. Um, that makes it really worthwhile. And it's so... Yeah, that it, it feels like it actually makes a difference for some people who are like, Hey, I actually got a bike again after like 30 years and I'm going for a trip this weekend. All because I saw your videos and yeah. you inspired me to do this. And that's such a... Yeah, that's, that is really what keeps pushing me as well. I, I've been pretty like open and honest about everything. Yeah. And because of that, people have been really open with me as well. Yeah. So I've gotten like letters and emails and everything just sent with the most horrific stories, stories. about everything. People losing wives and daughters and legs in motorcycle accidents. Yeah. And, and it's just the, the fact that people are like opening up to me, a random idiot on the internet. That's like, yeah. it, that's, it's touching. Yeah, it's very nice. I think uh, it's easy for other people to kind of get to know you as well or feel like they know you. Just yeah. like with any like celebrity, I guess, like you see so much of them and you kind of hear the history and you feel like you know them. It makes it easier to open up, especially when you kind of open that door talking about these topics. Yeah. It makes it, of course, easier. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause, uh, like before I used to be a very sort of introverted and shy person who mm -hmm. didn't talk about anything. And then just when everything happened with, well, well, with PR and everything, mm -hmm. I just, I gave up. I didn't, I didn't want to continue and so I was like, oh, fuck it. Yeah. I just say, I don't care yeah. what people think anymore. Screw and because this. I did that, then suddenly all these new doors open up. Yeah. It's, so after it's interesting. all, there's like some, always like some good parts to yeah. take from even the most horrible things. Yeah. Actually, that's good. Yeah. What are you doing now? Are you... Uh... I was supposed to be on my way to Latvia right now, actually for an event there, but uh, my body is telling me to slow down a little bit. It's been, uh, since I quit my job, it's just been a lot of external and internal stress and a lot of new things. And I just kind of dove into it head first thinking, you know, I can do all of these things at the same time, no problem. And then it kind of catches up with you. And I just find myself like so freaking exhausted and not so much the motivation to actually do stuff. So I figured I better just chill down and uh, yeah, hmm. take it easy a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's smart. Yeah. I'm going to try to do the same for, for a few months. Yeah. So, um, well, it's, uh, it's been really fun meeting you and talking to you. Likewise. And uh, awesome. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. It's really inspirational. Likewise. It's been pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for the coffee. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little chat and uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see what happens next. I'll, uh, I don't really know where I'm going or what, what will happen, but probably interesting. Probably something good. <laughs> so, see you in the next one. Peace. Bye. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Zulten. They're coming, huh? Good video.